this uh, item that we have, which is the team, the third team is technology in payments. And this is going to um, be handled by Mrs. Uh, Beran Donde. Beran, you're welcome on board. Thank you for having me. Uh, should I go ahead and start or? Yeah, please, can you go ahead and give your insight? Yes, can you go ahead and start with regards to what we have on as a team technology in payments? Okay, thank you. <clears throat> thank you, uh, Jibo, uh, for the opportunity. Thank you, GCRPX, for organizing this kind of a forum and uh, for inviting me. I especially like the topics because they're very relevant um, uh, in terms of technology and what we have going on today in the ecosystem. So my name is Biran Dondekelen. I am a CEO and co-founder of The Hub, which is a tech hub and a co-working space as well as an incubator. So what we do is we support um, businesses and entrepreneurs um, that uh, either have an idea to run a business or have just started a business or have gone very far in their businesses and need support in terms of scaling and internationalizing. Um, but in addition to that, I wear many hats. I am a woman in tech. Uh, that means I'm all over the place in terms of technology uh, events. I am an advisor on GAM Chicks, which is a group of young ladies that focus uh, on capacity building initiatives focused on technology. Um, I'm also an advisor for WISTEM, the recently launched Women in STEM Association, which also focuses on women in, um, in technology and science and engineering and mathematics um, across the sectors. Um, in addition to that, I do mentor and coach uh, young girls um, across different sectors, not just technology biased. <laughs> Even though technology runs in my veins, um, I'm sure everyone that knows me knows that about me. Um, but finally, I am also the president of the IT Association, which is an umbrella organization for all things tech or tech related in the Gambia. So if you're an individual in technology, if you are a student that's aspiring to study technology, if you are a business that's in the space, um, ITAG is an association you should know. If you don't know, Google us or go on our website, itag.gm and become a member because we are the voice of ICT. So we are, we are the ones that sit at the table when uh, laws are being drawn in terms of tech that affect in the entire nation. Um, the ministry will call us to the table. We validate these documents. We're there when these, these laws are enacted and our thoughts and ideas are always sought along the way. So um, it's a very critical organization and because of the way it is placed, it helps us to really know a lot about what's happening at the level of the ministry and also what's happening at the level of the ecosystem. So basically, we're pretty much always in the know. We know what's happening. We know the movers and shakers in the industry. We also know what's happening in terms of government and what their plans are in terms of technology because they do always um, fall back on us um, when it comes to feedback and, and thoughts in the ecosystem. So on that note, I, I, I guess um, I chose this topic because it's very close to my heart. Um, payments are something that um, we have been pushing for almost four or five years, I would say, very, very fervently at the level of the IT Association. We've organized uh, dozens of programs uh, revolving around um, payment systems, whether it is um, just a face-to-face, -face, whether it's the webinar like this, whether it is a roundtable discussion with government or fintech players. It's something that we've really been pushing, whether it is uh, at the ICT Expo where we invite the central bank to come in and really talk about where they are in terms of uh, digitalizing payments. So it's really something very, very close and dear to my heart. And until I see someone using their debit card or I see someone scanning a QR code and being able to pay for Muro Bata at Abitikinar, I'm not going to stop pushing this, 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 um, this thought, this this idea, and this this amazing uh, process called digital payments. So, in terms of digital payments in the Gambia, at the moment, um, the Gambia has a, ga a national switch. This switch interconnects all the banks, and a few fintech players. I would say maybe one or two, um, and the reason for that being. 
the, the, the national switch is, let me put this, I'm trying to be very politically correct now. <laughs> because I know come, a lot of questions are going to come because a lot of people are passionate about this topic. So the national switch at the moment does not have uh, an open door policy when it comes to plugging into it. So only banks are technically allowed to plug into this, this switch because this is the backbone of payments in Gambia. So for example, today, if you bank with Standard Bank and you have you, for example, don't have a standard bank ATM near your house, you can go to the Echo Bank ATM or the GT Bank or Ajay Bank ATM and be able to withdraw cash at a punitive charge, by the way. This is something that we are also um, pushing because the charges are extremely high when it comes to cross, um, cross bank um, withdrawals. So I live in Brufoot. I have an Echo Bank and a GT Bank near me and an Egypt. I'm very lucky because I'm not far from the turntable. But people who live in areas where ATMs are few and far in between, you are forced to actually just have to use a cross-network ATM. And in so doing, you end up incurring charges, especially if the amount that you're withdrawing isn't that much. Um, the charge really is not worth it, even though it is a percentage of what you're withdrawing that you're charged. So the charges are punitive. So that's one. So that's the national switch. So in terms of regulatory requirements, there is no fintech regulation as we speak in Gambia today, the 18th of March, 2023. There is no regulation that regulates, there's no law that regulates financial payments in Gambia. Doesn't exist right now, Amut. So that I want to make very crystal clear. And this space is supposed to be regulated by the Central Bank of the Gambia. At the moment, in terms of licensing, there are three, four players that have been granted licensing. But because of the lack of regulation and the lack of framework in terms of the financial market, which is in terms of fintech, let's say, you don't have anything called a fintech license at the level of the central bank, as I speak to you right now. So what they have is they're leveraging on an existing platform or an existing licensing band called the money mobile money licensing, which is not very friendly in terms of deposit requirement. It's extremely high. So if you were a fintech player, you are a startup and you've developed an amazing platform, you want to come and, and, and test it out or use it or get a license from the central bank, you would be asked for something ridiculous like five mil ten million dollars or $15 million dollars for a license. I don't know the exact amount um, because it it's kind of changing depending on which player I speak to. Um, but it, it is something that needs to be reviewed because they are leveraging on an existing infrastructure and not necessarily creating a framework that is favorable for fintech players in the market and actually having a policy that governs them that doesn't exist. Having a regulation that government got, governs them the fintech players that doesn't exist and having an environment where if you developed a software you're able to plug into let's say a gt bank or an afrisel or a qcell to be able to test out your product and see how how well it would work in the market to pilot it to work in a sandbox that doesn't exist either so these are all challenges that the fintech players are having in the market so now let me move away from regulation and come into the actual players in the market. So the actual players in the market, Gambia is a very strong remittance um, country. We have over 175 Forex bureaus in the country registered, fully operational. More than that now, because this is the last time I checked, which was a couple of months ago. And they have an association called the Association of Forex uh, Bureaus. And they're very, very active. The first Forex bureaus are literally like Bitiki Nars now. They're at every single corner. You'll see the Western Unions, the all those signboards all over the place. Everywhere you go, you'll find a Forex Bureau. So the Forex Bureau are, are licensed by the central bank and they have their own regulation that governs them. But you when this when you bring in the fintech players now, you're talking about Wave, which is one of the newest entrants in the market. You're talking about ping money, which is slowly um evolving into a wallet. Uh, you have Nafa, which is already a wallet that's uh, active in this ecosystem. You have Weichit, which was which is a product of Asotech, uh, which is also a wallet, um, a digital wallet platform um, where you can transfer cash um, 
and be able to do transactions. Then you have Kashma, which is also a product from Kyor Enterprises, which is a, a, a Gambian software company that's also very similar to a digital wallet and payments and sending, receiving, that kind of stuff. Then you also have, I believe, yeah, I mentioned Wave already, uh, Nafa, um, yeah, Wechit, Kyor, Kashma, Ping Money. Uh, so these are the major players in terms of fintech um, in the Gambia. I must say, though, um, better late than never, the ministry recently um, reached out to these players um, and to ITAC to, to, to have a face-to-face -face meeting to really look at some of the challenges that they face in terms of um, regulatory requirements and in terms of unclear licensing requirements. And we had a meeting with the players. After the meeting with the ministry, we had a meeting with the players and um, we were able to come up with a report on some of the challenges that they had. And um, and some of these challenges are some of the things that I've mentioned, unclear regulatory requirements. Sometimes you have players in the ecosystem that are just going with the flow because there's really no law that is binding them to their operationalization. So you will have some that have been given a mobile money license, others have been given a fintech license, quote unquote, which doesn't actually exist under under the central bank as we speak um, and others are trying to get a mobile license but aren't very clear in terms of what they're required to do in the fintech space so so right now to be honest uh, there is no payment gateway in the gambia what we have is a national switch and what the national switch does is it plugs in all the banks and allows the banks to be interconnected um, and allows people to use the ATMs across different banks. But what we don't have, or what we do have in country, we do have one aggregator, and we also have some of these um, some of these fintech players that are also looking for aggregators outside of Gambia, because the aggregator that is within Gambia also is limited in terms of what it can do. So this aggregator is Alchemy, and Alchemy is connected to all the telcos. Um, but there are limitations in terms of um, alchemy is not connected to the switch. And if you are an aggregator, it's just a natural process for you to be connected to the switch. Because ideally, in a, in a payment system setup, in a digital payment system setup, all the fintech players and all the um, content uh, providers and all the digital wallet pro uh, providers, they don't connect to the core network, which is the switch. They connect to what we call aggregators. And these aggregators are the ones that connect to the switch. That's how the structure is supposed to work. But right now, because the only aggregator in the country is not even given the chance to connect to the switch, it's frustrating. So how do people like Kashma and Wechit and, and um, Ping Money and Nafa, how do they connect to the switch? How do they provide the services that they're pushing, that they're actually advertising to provide if they can't connect to the switch to get to the banks? So you end up having a situation, which is what we currently have. You have a platform like Wave or, or, or like Kashima, but you have to physically walk to a location to top up your, your, your wallet. You have to physically go to an agent to, to, to top up your wallet. It makes no sense. The natural process for this would be to have a bank to wallet where if you have a GT bank or you have an Ajib or you have an Echo bank, you just move your money from your, your bank to your wallet. And then you do whatever transactions you need to do on your wallet and then you move. So this is the frustration that a lot of users have. Like a user like me, I don't like to move around to get anything done. I want to sit in the comfort of my home and be able to do everything I need to do, be able to order. Hello, Jolly, Hello, Bran. Yes. Hello, Biran. Yes, I'm, I'm hearing you. Sorry for disrupting you. We're running out of time. So I think we have to just end it there with your discussion. Can I just um, wrap just to up? Follow it up with, with, Can with, I have with a minute question that I have? Wrap up? Yeah, please. Can, can I you wrap just up? uh we yes, can you wrap up please? We are running out of yeah. time. Sorry about that. That's fine. Thank That's you. not a problem. Okay, so you end up having a situation where consumers want to use the platform. They're they're hungry for the platform. In fact, they're begging for the platform, but the, the infrastructure is not ready to support that platform. That's where we are right now with the payment systems. The fintech players are ready. The users are ready, the consumers are ready, but central bank is not ready. The ministry is not ready. And the infrastructure is not in place and the regulations and policies are not in place. So I'll wrap up there and I'll, I'll wait for the questions.
Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Brian. Due to time constraints that we have, we could have allowed you, but the previous speakers have taken much of the time. We're sorry about that. Um, the question I have uh, for you is, what policies or investment are required to benefit from adopting technology in the payment system in the Gambia? As you've mentioned, there are a lot of challenges. Please be brief about this because we are running out of time. Thank you very much. Sorry, Jibu, you said what policies are? What policies or investment is required to benefit from adopting uh, technology in the payment system that you've just discussed? Yeah, I think I touched on that already. The policies we need is we need a clear fintech policy to support the fintech players in the market. And we need a clear regulation on how fintech players are expected to comport themselves in the market. Right now, everybody's, it's, it's a, it's, it's, it's a crazy show right now. Everybody's doing whatever they want because there is no regulation to tell them you can do this or you cannot do this. So what you end up having is every other two weeks, the central bank summons a pl player to a meeting or oh, you did this, you're not supposed to do that. When if the rules and regulations are clearly defined and the policies are in place, then we, you wouldn't have people being summoned every couple of weeks to the central bank. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Bran. Um, I have some other questions. Probably if we have enough time, we'll come to that. But just at this point in time, I would like to ask Isatu. Isatu, if you have any follow-up questions um, for, for Biran, please. Go ahead. No, I'm Hello, okay. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, all right. Okay. Yes, I can hear you. Yeah. Okay, then, Biran, let me just have this quick question before we move on to the next speaker. Um, in what state in the Gambia using the digital payment system for its financial transaction? What obstacles faces the Gambia development of a digital payment system? I did hear you mention some of the challenges, but can you can you can you repeat that? Can you emphasize on those two points? We just have some few minutes to do that, please. Yes. Yeah, so the, the challenges we have in terms of the digital payment systems is we don't have. Um, the aggregators we have don't have not been given the platform to connect um, to to the national switch, and this I believe is because the national switch. I, I believe um, I believe the national switch is being protected um, be, because there is some level of government involvement at the level of the national switch, and I believe that as 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 someone that's completely disconnected from anything to do with government or private sector, ITAG is completely independent. We believe that there needs to be another player in the market, another player that has no connection to government and another player that's independent that can provide the services that we need to move the digital payment forward, the digital payment systems forward. So we basically need another aggregator or an aggregator that's actually independent of government. Because right now the switch we have is not independent of government. There is some link somewhere. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Brian, for those wonderful explanations. Um, we're running out of time. So quickly, we'll go to the next uh, theme.